So today I feel like we've really developed a sense of community and I'd like to take that a step further and ask you to think about fingers. And while you think about fingers, I want you to shake them out. It's been a long day. Let's do this. <laughs> shake them out, snap them a little bit. That's right, I'll ask you to snap them up only two. Ooh, yeah. And now take the hands of the people sitting next to you. So, <laughs> for the next five minutes, we are all connected. Fingers may not pump your blood or process air. They might not help you get from point A to over there. You don't listen with your fingers, but they can brush through a lover's hair. They can strum out notes on a guitar, order drinks in some sleazy dive bar, or switch the radio stations in your car. These ten digits are all unique. My right middle finger has a hard callus from studying late into the night. The thousands of pens left resting there have marked me as one who writes. Without fingers to loosen the tie knots, how would we tie our shoes? Better yet, how do we push that button that lets us snooze? <laughs> How would we ever find that perfectly imperfect hand that fits ours like a puzzle piece taken from the same box? Or turn the dial on our gym locks? Hell, knitting a pair of socks would become impossible. Yeah, our voices can sing, but the horns, pianos, and strings would lose their conductors, their life givers, were we not to have fingers. These fingers can hold a nail for the hammer, type a poem, story, letter, or a dirty text message. <laughs> they wipe the tears that life can't help but dole out with its never-ending generosity, but wipe they do, clearing the path for a fresh round of salty healing. They held children, books, flowers, they held my dad's hair as we ceremoniously cut it before the chemo began. They held the bride's bouquet at a good friend's wedding, and her hand when she decided later that he wasn't the man. They somehow drunkenly managed to build a house of stolen bar coasters seven stories high. <laughs> the right hand caught a bandana thrown from the first cowgirl in the rodeo, first rodeo I was ever dusted by through the intertwining of these integral parts of our bodies. I invite you to physically feel what your neighbor's fingers have accomplished. Feel the first fish of the season rush as it bites the pole you're holding. Feel your fingers on their paintbrush or the clay that they're holding. Imagine hot, sticky handlebars gripped too tightly under sunburnt knuckles traveling miles. There are careful lab coat fingers pouring vial into vial. Consider gardening, <laughs> consider gardening dirt under the fingernails attached to the only hands that really knew how to hold you. There are gloved fingers, calloused fingers, and fingers covered in food. Ice cream fingers lead to ice cream, lips lead to ice cream love. Think about all the people the fingers in this room have loved. All the band-aids applied to skin knees, the holding hands beneath the blooming trees, a love song played on piano keys just for you and for me and for all of us because as creative beings, we are all connected. It may go undetected, but I'm betting that you feel it too. Through the power of touch, we are able to feel the uniqueness of others, so I ask you this, why don't we do it more? We scoot away from wandering thighs on buses, jump when our shoulder brushes that of an unfamiliar friend. Because, as I see it, we are all friends. Until proven otherwise, Plato tells us to know thyself. But wouldn't knowing others lead us to self-discovery just as easily? Sharing ideas and creativity and ice cream will help us wander more contently, sometimes alone 